Last time on The Good and the Bad of Black Grad. Yeah, um, so it's something, this idea that, you know, the pandemic is more deeply experienced and, and, and more problematic, more challenging, more damaging for Black folks um, in whatever profession they are is something that, you know, I, I have focused on and have thought about a lot. Um, it's something that I've written about quite a bit. Um, a piece came out last week on this topic. And as it relates to Black graduate students, I think that there's a particular way that this is produced. And I think that that production is like, the university wants more from us, right? Um, there were more demands on Black graduate students' time because during the pandemic and also during what some are calling a racial reckoning, um, you know, the actual reckoning, I, I don't know who is doing it, but some are calling it a racial reckoning. Yeah. It, it, that labor and that weight is being taken on by black graduate students who at once feel as if there's an opportunity or a space to explore or to articulate things that haven't been heard before. And at the same time are precarious, are, are being burdened with the, with the responsibility to, to kind of intervene in that space and wait that I think, you know, honestly, folks need to do for themselves. Um, and so I've seen that happen. I've seen the kind of strain and weight that that's placed on folks um, that, you know, in another world or in another time wouldn't necessarily be there. So that's something that comes up for me. The first thing that I was thinking about when I, when I think about the prototype kind of Ken white student is that we know that there is a lack of black faculty, a lack of black mentors to really, and and just focus on developing the black graduate student experience and learning. But this moment is calling black students to teach the white students. So the prototype kind of can, can sit back and just ride the wave of just getting all this richness and learning all these histories and you know and i'm not saying the ken has bad intentions they're just learning no, and right. what about the black students we want to learn too and we want to grow too and we want that space for our education to be pluralized mm -hmm. and to be anti-racist and mm -hmm. you know and right. why do we have to be the ones to, to, to do, do the work to do to do the work why yeah this is the, the university should already be it should already be a part of the system honestly so this is actually something that we've talked a lot about well, specifically at mcmaster's so at the gsa we um well actually kikes um had, had i think it was in 2016 or 2017 um there was conversation there about student supervisor relationships and they released some student supervisor guide um, that the student will fill as well as the supervisor at the beginning of the grad school experience and then they will you know throw their grad school journey they'll you know chat about things that might change things that um chat about you know what this document says and what's actually happening in reality yeah. and you know where things can change if there's wiggle room etc um but it wasn't mandatory at mcmaster and one of the things that at, at least at mac that we've been pushing for at the gsa was to make it mandatory for the supervisor and the student to fill out this it's like an eight page it's very comprehensive um and it's not a contract but it, it keeps both parties accountable to each other um so even before this form was was generated me and my supervisor did something similar we sat down and we set out expectations so we are both accountable to each other throughout our grad school journey no coming to be longer is something that is very very amendable to um to um social intervention and we interviewed immigrant service providers to find out about um you know um you know issues related to community belonging and people talked about the fact that um you know, when people try to belong, they first try to belong to people that you know are um, of similar background, so such as um, black, because a lot of you know the broader community um, is not um, accepting 
of um, black um, populations. Um, 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 and then um, the other thing is, um, you know, when we asked about um, you know, strategies to promote community belonging, they talked about natural environment. Um, so, you know, some of the natural environment is, you know, maybe there is a conference, the Black Graduate Student Conference mm -hmm. or something. It's, you know, you're going there, but but then there's also, you know, other things that you're gaining from that in terms of feeling like you're part of a community That's and connecting to other people. Um, so um, so mm -hmm. those are some of the ways, um, you know, to, to um, deal with um, one's mental health. This episode was brought to you by the Intersections of Gender, a signature area of research at the University of Alberta. Intersections of Gender supports and promotes intersectional research and research design for faculty and students across campus. This episode was also made possible through the support of Professor Shirley Ann Tate. Dr. Tate is a professor and Canada Research Chair, Tier 1 in Feminism and Intersectionality in the Department of Sociology at the University of Alberta. Her research in Black Diaspora Studies focuses on Caribbean decolonial theory, and she publishes on institutional racism, the body, beauty, race performativity, and hybridity.